is a high society wedding and a grumpy professor. <laughs> yep, high society wedding to a grumpy professor. This is the J.R. Hendrick Texan Gentleman podcast that deals with the early in the life of my alter ego, J.R. Hendrick. This episode is in a narrated format, commentary by myself and J.R. Relax and enjoy the adventure. Take care. God bless. Hello, everybody. J.R. Hendrick here. I have Brent Clark here because uh, Jimmy is under the weather. He's asked me to take over because of some things going on with his life. Selling, selling his dad's estate. So I'm taking over for him. Uh, particularly all the podcasts that he's personally doing. Unless he specif- specifies. And this one, he's asked me to do it. This episode is called Tall, Bright, Bulky Type. All right. Uh, one caveat. We're going to be drinking Dr. Pepper. And we're going to drink every time that someone puts JR in a sullen mood. Or someone puts Jim in a sullen mood. <laughs> Sounds reasonable. Well, let's get things going. The acceptance episode was quite a, how do we say it, roller coaster. But this one is, in many ways, it's a downflow. Okay, so it's 1 p.m. Central. And, and uh, JR is sitting outside the Gainesville uh, mansion when Rand's uh, Bentley pulled up in the in the drive. You know, I've been looking forward to this. Rand said. You need this trip to Tulsa. Jim Bob Orton. To back out on you at this point was very dense, Rand said. That is ecstatic. It will do me some good. Mama knows that, Jared said. And Betsy pops out and she says, Bruno, get your fags, friend. Come on in. And I'll your pour you boys a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> why don't we go why don't we go ahead and get us a Dr. Pepper? Such a time as this. Alright. Let's get us a doctor fit. We're gonna have to drink to this. We're gonna have to drink to this. Cause uh quite frankly, uh this is a happy moment. In the last episode, acceptance, Jim I. Horton was uh Putting JR in a sullen mood. Okay. Let's hope we don't have to use the bell in this episode, JR. I'm afraid we're going to have to. Okay, so it's 3 p.m. London time and Christine goes to visit she's visiting the several several hotel 
Yes, John Henry. Stayed here for five weeks. The lady, uh, this court said, customarily, he had a staffer protect his hat, his portable keyboard, and his three laptops. He was so eccentric, that man. It's hard to believe he fell for an American here in London high society. And, and Chris seems like, oh, she jilted my brother. And the wedding's thrown on Little Rock. And, and the desk clerk lady says, well, sure, she, um, your brother's going to the wedding. And Chris seems like, uh, no. Um... Because the rival of his affections is going to the wedding and <laughs> daddy ain't going out of it. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of what Jennifer wants. That's kind of what Charlie wants. That's kind of what John Henry wants. Bad combination. And, oh, okay. Now, for Jennifer and John, be a different story. And Christine says, well, my silly mother's sending him to Tulsa. And the desk clerk says, well, we, we reserved this room for you if you need me. We'll look at it some other time, Christine says. Now it's 3 p.m. Central. I want you to picture this, okay? 3.30 p.m. Central. It is... It is the White House. It is the White House. Okay, and President Clinton is meeting with Chief of Staff Leon Panetta. And, and the president's like, make this quick. I got a terrible case of jet lag. You know, the president says that. And Leon Panetta says, what the hell are you going to do about Hendrick? And the president says, I don't know. He comes home from his leave of absence. So, I thought maybe we send him somewhere after Easter. And Panetta says, he's a loose cannon. And the president, okay, he, this is one of his signature moves where he's kind of like, you know how you chill out. <laughs> he takes a, a Cuban cigar and puts it in his mouth and lights it. And uh, he blows smoke, and he says, go figure. By seven months, he'll be no uh, consequence to me. And Panetta's like, you're not concerned one, one little bit? And Clinton's like, Wish, why should I? Adamant little uh, punk supported me four years ago. And now, he's going to squeal and run home to mama. <laughs> you know, Uncle Lincoln's like, he's, he's all happy. He's like, I had a feeling that is what is going to is going on. Okay. So he goes on TV. And mashes a few but, uh, buttons. What's the difference? He's brilliant, I guess. But unbalanced. Hell. He got into a feud with a few of his friends over oil. Nothing new here. 
He thinks he can push Congress. And Panetta's like, uh, yeah, but uh, he, he very well could. And Clinton's is like, well, once again, what difference uh, would it make? He'll be gone soon. Back to oil and ranching, which is what he deserves. I'm not scared of him anymore. And Clinton and, 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 and Panetta's like, you're not? And Clinton says, my education is is superior to his. I've said my piece. We gather intelligence on him. Do something to keep the podunk redneck busy. He said he ain't nothing but a political hack. No, he don't scare me. But again, the same question. And the president's like, never mind. I have staff to keep an eye on him. Now, Leon, if you'll excuse me, I'm going upstairs to, to take a nap after my press conference. Okay, so it, it's 5 p.m., and the family is playing Monopoly. It's obvious that Rand is winning. And second is tied J.R. and Jessica. J.R. Uh, J.R. has St. Charles and Virginia. Jessica has states. Jessica has uh, Oriental and uh, and Vermont, but not Connecticut. Okay, so now it is 7 p.m. Central at the Hendrick Estate in Gainesville. The family, they're having breakfast together for the last time. It's 9 p.m. in the bedroom, main bedroom. Jim and Betsy are uh, quietly holding each other. They felt so good together after such a long absence. If they felt that way, I always wondered why. Carol, she wouldn't come back. She felt the loyalty to the ranch. Okay, so it's 4 a.m. Jim's up, you know, he's getting all dressed up and everything. And he's getting ready to see JR uh, go bye bye. Because JR's getting ready to go to Tulsa to be the Stoney's father, Maurice uh, Rosen. As Stoney's going to be up there that weekend. So, there we go. Now, five thirty a.m. As J.R. and Rand get into limousine, Jim gives him um, a final pep talk. Go make me proud, boy. Pay no attention to McKay or Harmon. Okay, so 6.50 a.m. As JR is checking in the private jet uh, terminal, Betsy serves pancakes and French toast for breakfast. And the family sits down. And Betsy says, well, and Cousin Bobby says, well, I got 
I got a plane that's going to be taking me back to, to Houston this afternoon. And Aunt Donna says, well, after breakfast, we got to hit the road. We got to get Max ready, ready for school again. And Jim says, well, the rest of the family's going to be here. Um, just remember, Easter, barbecue at Swainfield. Yeah, there's going to be a special episode on that. And I'm hoping that Jimmy is well by then. Should, should be, should be no problem. Okay, so 7.20 p.m., uh, the private jet carrying J.R. and Rand departs from DFW Airport to Tulsa, 8 a.m. The plane arrives in Tulsa and uh, they're greeted by Stoney's, uh, Stoney and Maurice uh, Rosen. They climb into Maurice's 1993 uh, Pontiac van to go straight to the penthouse because Maurice had some Democratic uh, politicking to do. And Stoney's father, okay, Jared, okay, Jared, let's, let's take yours. Stoney's father would switch to the Republican Party in 2013, putting aside his feud with Daddy and Granddad Swain. He died in December 2022. He suffered from a deformed aorta from birth. And no one knew anything to do about it until 1954. He would be cremated and ashes spread in Texarkana, Texas on Christmas Eve 2022. Okay, so now What's going on here? It is one thirty. Okay. In Tulsa, J.R. Stoney and Rand had a stack morning. Uh they went to Pancake Factory for breakfast. Uh, JR ordered a pizza for them to have lunch. Maurice was out politicking still. The Biles wedding is at two, Rand said. But JR, your daddy was wise in sending you here instead of Little Rock. Charlie Nation uh, probably showed up at the wedding. I, Stoney said. Despicable. Charlie is despicable. I never want to see him again, Jared said. Daddy was right about him all along. And Stoney said, If he bothers you again, Ren said, My father has contacts uh, in Bear County. If he ever bothers you again, Ren said, and Stoney cuts him off. Says, 
Well, my father has contacts in Bear County, and Jared's like, let's just hope he don't, because they just hope he don't bother me anymore. Let's just hope he don't bother him anymore, Rand said. I don't think Jim Hendrick thinks to, uh, to comment to him. Okay, so now it's 2 p.m. And at in Little Rock, the wedding of John Henry and Jennifer Bowers begins. True to form, Charlie Nation was very high. I just watched the wedding ceremony. Okay, so now we're at the 4 p.m. Back in Tulsa, the boys are finishing a game on Monopoly when JR gets a text with a picture of Jennifer and John from Charlie and with the caption, Mr. and Mrs. John Henry. Pay it no mind, Maurice Rosen said. I can cut through some red tape and have the FCC have the SEC the the the, the SEC come to Bear County if I have to. Daddy and I may have our own way, Jared said. Okay, so it's now six PM Jim, Betsy, and Amy Kathleen, and Elizabeth Marie, they're dining a pizza that night. All right. And then 8 p.m. In Tulsa, Maurice returned after a long day of politicking. Maurice was a lifelong Democrat. But after 1993, he made his peace with the Hendrix and the Swains. Maurice would switch uh, parties in 2013. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go over to the uh, 17th. We just got to find it. Let's take some. It takes some patience. Really, it does. Here we go. March 17th and 18th. Now, it's 5 p.m. JR had flown in the Lubbock arriving at uh, 8 a.m. He went to uh, First Baptist Church, Lubbock. Uh, the club was closed today, so instead of Sunday school, Carmen took him to his church, St. Andrew's Assemblies of Christ, for Sunday school. Now, of course, Jr. is in his room studying. He knows that Kevin would not be back until from Dallas until um, around uh, seven. Okay, so it's it's seven p.m. Eastern. It's in D.C. 
Jim's sitting on this front porch of 14 Heritage Gate, and here comes one of his neighbors, columnist uh, Catherine Baird, and she says, and she's like, I apologize. And uh, Jim says, apologize too. And she says, so does that mean that we have an appointment? He's like, yeah, my wife's not coming back in a while, so what the heck. Uh, Jim? Cheating is still cheating. Cheating is still cheating. Bell time. Yeah, we had to give him the bill. All right. Now, 6.30 a.m. Uh, cinnamon rolls are and, and, and bagels and fruit um, are for breakfast. And Jared sits down with C.B. Coleman and Stoney Rosen. And of course, Brent's there too. And he's like, you know, I got to thank you for including me in your plan. And Gerald's like, you get what you, uh, you, you wanted? Now, someday, I might get what I want. And uh, CB says, I on the ball, Jr. Uh, don't go angst over whether or not to ask this girl out. I also concerned uh, on your uh, studies, as so C.B. Coleman says. And, of course, Connie's like, then again, CB, CB, I'll give him something to focus on. Besides, being uh, sat over his uh, grandmother or that advocacy paper which is done I have to know we can all breathe a sigh of relief for that we can all breathe a sigh of relief for that Stoney said Gerald wouldn't stop stressing and stressing over that paper. Okay, so now here's what's going on, okay? It's 9.50 a.m. Eastern from his office at 14 Heritage Gate. Jim is working with an intern to get out a press release uh, for the day. Of course, tonight he and Jack and Lucy Robertson were to have dinner with Constantine Bush. Now, it's 1 p.m. and JR stops outside Map Hall and bumps into Kristen. Bumps into Kristen. And Kristen says, Why don't you stay for dinner? Uh, Pulsey is working on her final uh, accounting project tonight, Kristen said. I know. I promise, Tony. I'm, I'm uh, meeting him at the library. I got to sit down with the committee. 
uh, for my defense tomorrow to get the damn guidelines for my defense. Well, when can we see have dinner? Kristen, give me time. Look, you said we had uh, something to talk about after class. Let's talk about it Wednesday. It's like Taylor is trying to avoid her, but it's obvious. Now, it's 2 p.m. at the ranch, okay? It's at the ranch. Which we haven't had too many scenes at the ranch. But we, we've got to have those. Because this is, once again, a scene where... For a change for several months, Betsy is reasonably happy. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, uh, Betsy uh, stops from overlooking some of the cattle and goes to the pool area to talk to Elizabeth Marie. And Betsy's like, something's bothering you, honey. Tell me all about it. And Elizabeth Marie's like, and Betsy, I'm scared. Frank dumped me last week when we were in Gainesville. And I'm about to graduate in a little less than two months. I don't know what to do with my life. And, and Bessie's like, look, call Mike Fields. He'll find a few positions for people who have political science, uh, study political science in college. Okay, so now here's where we are. Okay, it's it's obvious. It's a library. Okay. So in in the uh, in the Center for Visually Impaired at the Texas Tech Library, Jr. and Kevin are studying, or rather, Jr. is helping Kevin, and Kevin's like, "This Professor Jones is going to drive me crazy." Jr. Kevin McDonald said. I've heard of uh, Edward A. Uh, Heyman, and you told me about now. I'm Ian uh, uh, Chomsky all semester. So then, there should be, there should be a piece of cake. Let's go online to the periodicals and let our fingers do the stalking. And Kevin's like, I wish my parents would give it a chance to meet you. No way. They were like your father. He's so pompous. 
egotistical and arrogant. You, you two, you're too damn self-effacing, altruistic, and humble. Kevin McDonald said, and Gerald's like, my folks had just moved onto the ranch when I heard my granddad sit down the whole entire family and I heard him say I will tolerate no smart Alex in my house. That alone, Kevin, made me humble. And Kevin says, almost forgot your parents had, your grandparents had a bigger hand in, in raising you than your own uh, father. Ever since I was five years old, he was always out there, chasing for oil, um, chasing for good, um, chasing for gold, chasing for money, chasing for fame. And now, he's in the fortunate chase for power. Like you said, it makes you sad because your dad hungers uh, for some more. Yeah. And he's the reason why sometimes I'm not sure what I want out of life. Okay, so now we're at... 6 p.m. Um, and Chick Fried Steaks for dinner at the Holy Spirit Club. And of course, JR sits down with Connie and Stoney. And JR said, Still waiting on that, on that grade. I haven't been uh, summoned to McKay's office yet, Gerald said. I better get uh, prepared. Get prepared to be raked over the coals. Please don't beat yourself up too, too hard. Connie said. I've seen you slave away on that paper for so much now. You deserve to have a little fun for the rest of the semester. She does have a point, Stoney Rosen said. Stop by my room tomorrow night for Bible study. You need some encouragement. I saw the press clippings of the Bowers Henry wedding. And so we in the Holy Spirit Club. We are here to encourage you right now. Okay, so now it's uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, and Jim had had a lovely dinner at Constantine Bush's house. 
and he says, we want to do this again sometime. And Constantine Bush says, you have, a, you have a heavy weight on you, on your shoulders, do you? Constantine Bush said, I support you. You're going before a Senate committee uh, body tomorrow. That's unlike the house where Simeon Peters can tear you apart. Constantine, Jack Robertson said, shaking his hand. Jack, Constantine said. Maybe Hillary. Jack, don't be a stranger, Hillary Bush said, embracing him and Lucy. Well, let's get ready, Jack Robertson said. Patting Jim on the back. You have that uh, Senate hearing in the morning, and I have to do some research at the Library of Congress. Okay. Interesting. Some patience here to to really find what we're looking for. I'm pausing gauge till I find this. Okay, this is where some of the meat comes here. I want you. I want you to be ready here. You know exactly. Give me some in part of it. Okay, so it's nine a.m. Eastern, and uh, Jim's test fine before the Senate Committee for Small Business and Entrepreneurship. And here comes uh, idiot uh, Simeon Peterson. I have several questions for you, Mister Hendrick. First of all, why the leave of absence? Senator Peterson asked. My family's grieving, Jim said. Point of order. Relevance, Senator K. B. Hutchinson said. Sustained, Mr. Peterson. Senator Jan Myers uh, said. Would you scale back on sustainability for small business if it's uh, separated from welfare reform? Senator Peterson said. You already have the answer. Um, you already have the answer. And yet, senators like Cordell Wheeler and Diane Feinstein are attacking this by putting it attached to welfare reform. And Peterson said, Do you have a social or personal? Uh, Vendetta against President Clinton and the Clinton administration. And uh, Senator Nancy uh, Kassenbaum says this Point of Order Committee 
inflammatory. Point well taken. Mr. Peterson, wrap it up. Senator Meyer said. Sorry, Your Honor. Nothing further. I'm just trying to make a point. That's right, Senator Peterson said, walking out from the stand in a huff. No, I gotta say, I gotta say, we got a drink to this. It's not putting JR in the sense of uh, talking to no, but it's putting daddy in the to do. And as we'll see in forthcoming years, the rivalries put each other in sulk, sulking mood. Indeed, we do. Okay. Now, 9.30 a.m. Central. Constitutional law class. And Dr. Wilde says, Mr. J.R. Hendrick, would you please give a wisdom in the landmark Supreme Court decision, Gideon versus Wainwright? And, and uh, J.R.'s given the decision. And he says, uh, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of almost like a law school, simulated law school deal. Now it's 11 a.m. Central. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Betsy is talking happily to the chief shepherd about uh, releasing some of the sheep in time for spring. Now, it's 1.50 p.m. Jar walks out of Smith Hall after an eventful day and receiving the lengthy 10-page guidelines on answering a defense for his advocacy paper. The guidelines were given by Dean Satie. Now, now, as far as I know, Jr. he told me them things made you angry. <laughs> Empirical evidence, advocacy, found a problem with that. So we'll drink to that. <laughs> Our pancreas is ain't gonna take us with this. Now, 3 p.m. Central, Kristen is in her dorm writing her final sample memo for a professor to give to a potential job opportunity when Gara comes and knocks, knocks on the door. And she's so happy, she's like, Oh, JR, it is always good to see you. And JR's like, I'm, 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 I'm looking at asking you to dinner with me at the Holy Spirit Club tonight. And Christian's like, I can't. Daphne is picking me up t tonight to have dinner at a hotel. With a sapphire in the uh, Amistad business. I got you a bottle of, of, of Pepsi and a couple of Hershey's. So why don't you and I sit down and 
it seems some point my guts and my dinner and give up to yours. Don't think JR's not happy about that. So 7 p.m., JR, he skips spaghetti at the, at the Holy Spirit's Club. He goes to the snack bar at Sneed, you know, burrito. So now he's having a Bible study. And, of course, uh, Brent tells him that the matron had, had, had said JR some spaghetti. Okay, so now it's 4.30 in the morning of the 20th. And meanwhile, I'm back at the ranch. Betsy wakes up and goes downstairs for some coffee. Today, she was to oversee five bulls going to Texas City. For a four-day rodeo. Okay, so now we go down. Today, all of her mother's clothes were being sold, except for one uh, pantsuit with a pillbox hat that was similar. To that of Jackie Kennedy's. Betsy would keep that and wear it whenever she decided to go on official uh, trips with, with uh, Jim. Okay, so now here we go. It's 8 a.m. Eastern. And in the uh, movie theater, Jim's meeting with his dream team. And, Dave, and Dave's all nervous. He's like, But you have to appear on the case this, this afternoon. You know, he's like, He said, You avoid that. Your conservative friends like uh, Constantine Bush would think less of you. And I hate. And, and, uh, Jim was like, enough. I'm not going. On that show today, I got a budget meeting with Treasury. So Steve Morris says, now, Dave, look, Jim has the freedom to decide whether or not to be on that show. And to be honest with you, he knows the right way. That show is nothing but tabloids. Steve Moore said. And, and and John McDonald says, look, you put him on that show. After a couple of interviews, I'm going to ask him about the Bob Cooney appeal. And I don't think Jim wants to talk about that. Okay, so it's 10.50 a.m. Central. So, J.R., uh, he's walked out of the business building. And, and Chris is like, J.R., please say... We can live together next year, Kristen said, as he walked out of the building. And she was getting ready to walk in. Now, oh, honey, hold on a minute. 
You know I can't give you. I guess on you all right now. I need you to give me some time. Here I said. Okay, so it's 1 p.m. Eastern. The budget meeting with the SBA and Department of Treasury was not going well to Jim's liking. Phil later wrecked him over the coals about his uh, economic packages saying that the government didn't have a budget for it. Okay, so it's 2 p.m. Central. And Brent's room, you know, him and Jesse are talking. He says, Did you know Kristen asked JR to come live with him? Why didn't he ask her out? Makes no sense. And and, and Jesse's like, because JR don't want to live with her. With patience, he's falling for her, Jesse said. Okay, so now it's a fateful time, okay? It's 4 p.m. This is where JR gets his final grade. He walks into the office of the great one, uh, Freedom K. He walks in there, uh, and McKay says, Couldn't you come a bit early? And, and he says, I give you the lowest honor grade possible. Your contention is faulty and uh, hollow. Your bibliography is choppy. And once again, I'm afraid you're echoing. your father's uh, views without doing any uh, decent research. Okay. Jared's like, let me repeat myself, Mr. McKay. My daddy taught me at an early age to think for myself. Yes, he helped me with some source materials. But I also came up with, with many of it on my own. My buddies helped me slave away on this paper. Not to mention, you asked me to take my uh, economic data to uh, Reverend Isaiah Friedman's office right here in Lubbock where he ain't, ain't even campaigning for Congress in Texas. And McKay's like, this paper ain't even worth publication in any uh, academic journal or anywhere McKay said. And Gerald's like, talk to my daddy, Gerald said, marching out of the professor's office. Oh, good. Of course, you know that would change. Okay. First of all, Friedrich McKay. Friedrich McKay, we got to go ahead and just give him the, the, the bell. Bibliography. Choppy. Choppy bibliography. Idiocy on the stick. <laughs> Idiocy on the stick. Now. 
5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Jim had had Kelly earlier this afternoon book a private jet for him to leave late Friday night for Wallingford, Connecticut with his dream team because there was going to be a rally there on Saturday about faith-based initiatives. Okay. 5 p.m. Central. Okay, JR walks into uh, Smith Hall 101. There's a debate going on. And And of course, of course, in, in the forum is Dean Satie. Good morning, uh, good after, good evening, and welcome to the Texas Tech Forum uh, Union tonight. Uh, I'm Dean Satie, professor of. Mass Media and Public Affairs at Texas State University. Today, tonight's debate uh, seemed to show Texas Tech University versus UT Austin. Our first debate tonight is whether there should be tax cuts for small business. Arguing for is James Ryan Hendricks Jr., a senior at Texas Tech University. And arguing against is Cynthia Talmage, a senior at University of Texas at Austin. Okay, so now it's 8 p.m. and Jr. is in his room. He's not happy because of the uh, because. Quite frankly, the the paper Okay, so let's see if we can get this to work. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see. No. Okay, I need to pause and get all the court. <sighs> okay, we're going to finish it the, the, the hard way, but we can do it. All right, so here's what's going on. It's 1 p.m. the 22nd of March. JR is sitting there at the class, uh, moping in the living room of the dorm, and Kevin McDonald walks in and he's like, uh, JR, what the heck H is going on? He's like, uh, um, Brent said he didn't even talk to Kristen after class, and that's unlike you. For Professor McKay, that's what. What the H, McKay? And, 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 and Kevin's like, McKay is playing footsie with Dr. Harmon, who is still having an affair with Christy Murray. 
and he hasn't even been busted yet. But give it time, he will be. I'm not talking about Harmon's personal life. I'm talking about my paper. And uh, Kevin's like, you're going with me to the Wesleyan dance tonight. Come on, JR. Don't say no. You deserve a good time. So here we go. 2 p.m. JR decides to go to speak to Dr. Kinghorn. And Dr. Kinghorn said, I wish I could overrule the committee's uh, asinine uh, preliminary decision. But you should have come and talk to me, and I will offer you some advice, Kinghorn said. You wouldn't have tried to skew the uh, sources of my paper. They are getting kind of, you know, uh, upset. And... And King Orange like, I'm on the conservative side. Um, like you and your father. The dean was idiotic. By selecting Frederick McK- McK- McKay to be your uh, paper advisor. This is the department and the dean's fault. for telling all this faculty politics going on. Dr. Wilde and I could have been more able advisors like some lecture in law and public affairs. You don't believe I'm just echoing what my daddy says. And the Kinghorn says, <laughs> Evans, no. I saw your last semester in political your last semester in political analysis. And you were able to develop your mind just fine without your father. Frederick McKay or that crazy Dr. Harmon. So, there you go. That season is, that series show is over. I give the, I give this a, uh, I'm going to give it a 3.2 uh, Dr. Peppers. Um, front page paper of Jennifer Bowers' wedding. And a friendly handshake with uh, Chris and Haig. Ditto. Hope you enjoy listening to the J.R. Hendrick Texan gentlemen. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and become a part of the adventure. This is the James Hendrick Empowerment Network saying until next time, get ready for the rest of the story. It's going to get a lot more bumpier from here.